glad you're here today. It's Sunday, September 3rd, 2023. Yeah, I caught the end of Old Faithful going off. Yeah, that's a good timing there. It's currently been raining today there at Yellowstone. I don't know if they're going to zoom in or not. There is a lot of people there at Yellowstone at Old Faithful. Look at all that. Um, being the Labor Day weekend. Yeah, look at all the people. Do they realize that they're walking in the center on the inside of the caldera of a super volcano? They probably don't think about that when they're visiting the park or uh, don't think that it's going to erupt within their lifetime. Boy, are they going to be surprised. USGS is saying there was a magnitude 2.2 earthquake earlier today. It was actually, I think a 2.2. Let me look. Yeah, a 2.2. Um, 8.7 miles below sea level. All earthquakes are measured from sea level. Um, this is close to the area of Mir Plateau. It's actually close to, let me go to Google Earth. It's to the east of Fern Lake. That's where uh, there's been heating under the ground going up. And then, um, what year was it? Where they discovered through satellite images where the um, trees burned up because of the heat coming from the ground. Okay, and this is that area. Um, yeah, Parker Peak we got over here. This here is the monitor for Parker Peak. And it actually came in as a magnitude 2.92. Almost a magnitude 3. It probably could have been a 3. Uh, let me go here. I, I cut it off really early. Let's go to the seismic signature. I have to make that bigger. Yeah, I cut it off really early. And it probably extended um, to probably over in here in this area. Um, 2.92. And you can see there was two small earthquakes afterwards. Only one are they reporting. They're saying it occurred at... 1209. Um, they're saying it's a magnitude. There it is. Uh, a 1.5. Yeah, brought up a lot of heat. Look at that. Yeah, especially to that one. So was this one, in fact, a 1.5? See all the toxic gases and heated water that came up? I get a magnitude 1.97. Those of you that have larger uh, screens, maybe on your TV, that are watching this down at the bottom it says MD 1.97 this one they're not reporting and this one probably came in well, let's cut it off there um, a 1.61 that one they're not reporting let's go to the seismic signature I'll make it bigger okay the first one yeah um, was definitely volcanic tremors. See how they're slightly rounded? And I'll go to this one and we'll make that larger. See that? Volcanic tremors. Meaning magma is ascending, rising up. The ground's getting really brittle. It's not flexible because of all that pressure. Yeah, um, under the ground. Only about 600 feet um, pockets. You know, think of a, a sponge with all the holes in it. You know, those uh, sea urgent type um, sponges. And there's pockets within the sponge. And there's pockets of melted rock. Only 600 feet underneath where people are walking. Yeah, they probably don't think about that either. Yeah. I'm glad they finally zoomed in. Well, it looks like the camera. Oh, they moved the camera. Okay. Yeah. I've talked about how the sun's activity when there's solar flares has an effect upon the earth. Um, they were expecting maybe a KP index of maybe a 4. But you can see here, um, almost 6. What have we got here? 5.67. And currently, it's at a KP index of 3. Um, these are 3-hour increments. Yeah, we got 3.3 .3 and et cetera. 
Let me show you this. So I talked about these solar storms, how they have the effect on the Earth, uh, creating earthquakes, possible volcanic eruptions, and weather. Like I said, it's been raining there today. Here on their watches and warnings, they originally said that they expected a geomagnetic storm of um, index of 4. But what's interesting about that is they're going to have northern lights, maybe um, up in Canada and Alaska. Let's see. Um, do they give the um, uh, 65 degree latitude? All right, so 65 degree would be up here in Canada, and they don't, well, yeah, they do show Alaska over there, and then uh, probably parts of Russia, but I don't know. Uh, will we be able to see it along the Great Lakes, maybe? Montana, uh, Michigan, um, Maine, yeah, yeah, look at that. That was kind of blurry. This was issued at 9.16 Universal Time. So that was um, at least nine hours ago. So nine hours ago, it was 3.67. Prior to that, um, 4.76. And yesterday I talked about this M-Class flare that went off, M3.29. We got another one that went off today. Um, M6. Wow, they're increasing in size. Boy, um, hopefully we do not have an X flare. Now, the X flare that created the uh, Carrington event, I believe, well, I want to say 9. Now, here it says it was, um, yeah, a 10. That was in 1859. It was the largest documented solar flare in the last 500 years. They didn't have the equipment back then, so they're just guessing that it was um, an X flare of 10. USGS, yeah, they're probably enjoying their Labor Day vacation too, is only reporting two earthquakes. But here you can see there's multiple here on Parker Peak. Uh, this is probably the largest one. Am I? Oh, it went small on me, didn't it? Okay, there we go. It's got a long P wave on it. It did register across all five monitors that I have recorded here. Next to Parker Peak is Maple Creek. Then we got West Thumb, um, Holmes Hill, and Moose Creek, Idaho. Here it is for Parker Peak. I have to look up to see where that one occurred. The first wave of the earthquake, wherever it was at, came in at 1550 Universal Time. Yeah, it, it made Yellowstone slosh. Yeah, volcanic tremors. We're looking for something before 1550 Universal Time. And they have nothing, absolutely nothing. So once again, that's an earthquake. They're not reporting. Let me look on EMSC. Yeah, we got 1550 from Nevada, but that would not be it because it's only a magnitude 2.3, uh, 14 kilometers in depth. And then they got 1640 Fiji, 4.4. Um, that was real deep. But it's afterwards, so that is not it. I get a magnitude 3.26. Um, yeah, I don't know where it's at. Not a very large earthquake. Um, but they did not report it. Let me go back to the, um, uh, yeah. It's got a very long P wave. The P wave is the first wave of the earthquake, um, as it comes in because it goes directly through the earth. And then the S wave, think of surface. That would be the second wave of the earthquake. See, this is a P wave. I don't know why they're not reporting it. Um, more recently, we got this one right here at 1922, Universal. It's a small one. It only really shows up here at Parker Peak. Probably a little aftershock of that larger one that happened in that location. 
Uh, this one too is not being reported. Um, it comes in as a magnitude 1.57. Here's the current activity at West Thumb. This is over by Grant on the western side of uh, Yellowstone Lake. I'm going to try and find this. Yeah, a lot of popping. Look at all that. You can see it all marked in red there. I don't know if anyone's even watching. Yeah, heaven help us if we ever have a major event, a hydrothermal explosion. Um, yeah, where people are injured, especially for how many people are at the park today. Yeah, let's just bring this over. Yeah, look at them all. Yeah, pop, pop, pop. I'll show you the seismic signature. See that? Let's make that bigger if I can. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh, it went small on me. Okay, we'll go back to the spectrogram. You can really see them with the spectrogram. Yeah, and that only started after we had this um, two point, what was it, nine seven? Yeah, it all started after that. I'm off the line. Okay. Oops, that was an interesting one. Yeah, a lot of gases came up with that one. And we'll come over. Remember, they did the drill there at West Thumb for an earthquake swarm and for a hydrothermal explosion that created a tsunami. And, of course, that would have caused um, a lot, lots of loss of life if that ever occurred. So they did do a drill in 2011, oh, excuse me. All right, this is Moose Creek, Idaho. It's down by the western boundary or the west entrance of Yellowstone Lake. And let me look at this. I have not seen the screw waves in the last couple of days, so I think it's settled down a bit. Yeah. Let's take a look at the spectrogram. You see the lines of melt. Again, this is uh, down by the western boundary when I pulled the files a little while ago. Let's see, you know, more popping. There's another one. Like I said, a lot of these earthquakes, they're not reporting. Only reported two. Too little doesn't draw their interest. Here we have Maple Creek. Um, lots of little ones here. Those would be within that location of the monitor, which would be um, the Madison River area. Yeah, the area where originally, um, when they had the last major eruption, I'm not talking about the 40 smaller eruptions since the last major eruption, but the, this is where the last major eruption started. Yeah, they got quite a few marked in red. I guess they just feel they're not significant enough to report them. And this is what I was showing when I pulled the files. And this is Holmes Hill, close to the same location. Yeah, we got, yeah, see how it's way up here in that lighter, light blue? Yeah, the pockets of melt. Yeah, I had to download some different data. There's a lot of monitors that aren't working today. Um, my daughter says maybe on purpose. Yeah, I couldn't get the boreholes to work. Yeah, I don't know. At least I got the camera working. That was down for a few days. Here we have Beehive, and I don't know, it looks like this fella, at least right here, he brought his own chair so they can watch it. Uh, maybe they're hoping Beehive will go off. Normally, before it goes off, there's another little vent over here that will start spouting um, prior to Beehive. Beehive's a pretty spectacular little cone yeah a little geyser and then you can see um the uh, microbial mats up behind here yeah but unless this other vent starts venting they they're gonna have a little bit of a wait at least he brought his chair yeah anyways that's all i have for you right now yeah, you see one person watching and the other stop to see what's going on. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go off for a little bit. 
wasting their time. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments or questions, please put those down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Be safe this Labor Day weekend, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you.